Hello, uh, this is chapter 9, Counts Deceivable. We're doing an exercise today. Uh, this is using the allowance method for how to write off an account, not the direct method, but I will, I can, I can always end up doing the direct method as well. Uh, but I said to start with the, the allowance for doubtful account method because it is sometimes a more difficult method to grasp. So here's a synopsis. We have, uh, this is exercise 9-4 entries for uncollectible receivables using the allowance method. And the synopsis is journalize the following transactions in the accounts of Metromark Company, a restaurant supply company that uses the allowance method of accounting for uncollectible receivables. And I added one extra little entry up at the top here for January 1st just to show you how you create an allowance for doubtful accounts. So I debited bad debt expense for 50,000 and I credited allowance for doubtful accounts for 50,000. And so this is usually done at the beginning of the year after you've aged your receivables and you find out about your estimate of how much you're not gonna collect on. And to age a receivable, you just take each um, receivable that's due on a different time period times it by a percentage that gets higher and higher as it gets older and that's what you think you're not going to get and then you just add it up and that should be your uh, entry and then we'll start off right here for uh, February 11th accounts receivable um, Dakota company bought supplies on account for $29,000 so we debit accounts receivable Dakota company $29,000 and we credit sales so once again a sale made on, uh, on a, when you sell something on a receivable, it still ups your income. So that's a lot, a lot of why companies do it. It just gets you higher, makes you look better. And then of course, a goal along with that is cost of merchandise sold was 17400 so we take that off. Oh, that was a mistake right there. This is 17400 my apology. And then you take off the merchandise, of course, off uh, off the books. Next, April 15th, we were able to get $7,500 cash from them, but then they told us they can't pay the rest. So we, of course, take off their whole accounts receivable off the books for $29,000, but up here on the debit, we debit $7,500 cash. And then the difference between um, that and what we didn't get was $21,500 algebra, which is what we're going to debit for allowance for duffel accounts, which is going to lower what we can, what we, uh, it's going to take from the, uh, what we've estimated. Now, September 3rd, uh, we were actually able to get the rest of the money. They actually were able to pay the rest. I don't know why they couldn't before, but good thing they at least could do it now. So, uh, accounts receivable, Dakota Company, we reinstate um, what we wrote off, 21500 before we take the cash. And then we credit allowance for doubtful accounts for the twenty one thousand five hundred, and then we debit the cash for twenty one thousand five hundred, and then we take off the accounts receivable for twenty one thousand five hundred. So there's a step when we reinstate. We first put their account back on the books, take it out of the allowance for doubtful accounts, and then we take the cash. And I did a little T account here for the allowance of doubtful accounts to show what it looks like. Of being you, you credit it for what you estimate. You debit off what is written off, and then if people do end up paying, then you uh, credit it back in. And so, you know, that's the the, the allowance for debtful account method. Uh, I hope it was simple. It, I mean, it can get a lot more complicated if you wanted to add more transactions or whatnot or more companies. But this is basically it, uh, and a lot of it, once again. Allowance of the, uh, accounts receivable is also kind of a debt collection. So if you ever work in accounts receivable, it's debt collection. You'll be making calls, emailing. It's just you want to try to get as much money as you can because you want the cash. Even though it increased your sales, you're not. It uh, doesn't matter because you're not getting cash. So always look at always look at the cash flow statement because that tells you more than the income statement. Income statement will will factor in interest and fees that you might not have actually gotten cash on. So thank you so much, and I'll see you again.